Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be joined by Trevor Oldham from PodcastingU.com. Trevor, thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Excited to be here and excited to speak to your audience today. All right. So obviously we're big fans of podcasting, producing 63 shows. Let's go back in time a little bit. How did you get started? So back in 2015, I was running my own podcast and I was interviewing entrepreneurs on that show. Have been running the show for about two years. And I realized that I wasn't monetizing the podcast and you know, podcasting, as I'm sure you know, Seth, is a lot of work to do interviews. And I figured I want to make some money out of it. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. So I just started freelancing, editing people's podcasts. And one day I came across someone wanting to get booked on podcasts. And I figured, hey, I've never done that before, but I book client. I mean, I book guests on my own show. How hard could that be to work with her? Started working with her. She gave me some referrals, started finding a couple more freelance clients. And then after about six months, I realized that it could be a real business. And this was back in, in 2017. And fast forward about a year into the business, I started to bring on team members and I really thought it was going to be a full business from there. And that's really how I got started. I never expected it. it was more, I was just looking to make some, to monetize my skills that I had learned over the previous two years of podcasting. And, and then it led to this company. And obviously podcasting has sort of exploded over the last, uh, especially over the last year or so. And it's, it's been a great industry to be in since then. Absolutely. I'm sure the longer version of that could be in a book if it isn't already. <laughs> Um, so let's unpack some of that. So when you get a client, who's an ideal client for you now? Yep. So a typical ideal client is any service-based entrepreneur that has an online product or service to sell or a real estate investor. And they have to be generating at least six figures per year in their business. We typically don't like to work with someone under six figures because it's, it's hard to to spin their story in a way that makes them look to be very successful, where typically if someone has six figures in their business, they've been in business for at least three years, they know what they're going to be able to talk about, that sort of thing. So, and that's typically what we look for in, a, in an ideal client. Cause we have, we've had people come to us and they're just launching their business. And I'm like, it's, it's just not going to be a fit. You know, we, we typically look for that person that has seasoned experience in their niche. All right. And then why do you like getting them booked on podcasts so much? What have you seen it do for them? Talk a little bit about your passion for podcasting. First and foremost, one, I find out that it builds credibility. If someone's going on similar podcasts within their niche and their audience realizes they're on one show and they're on another show, like as a real estate investor, if we put them on, on multiple real estate shows, all of a sudden people start to see them as a thought leader. It builds up more credibility. And that's, you know, that's probably one of the better benefits. And then it's also networking with the host. We've seen people, you know, become joint venture partners, um, referral programs together, that sort of thing. And then also another benefit is being able to go out there and just raise more money, get new clients, get new leads, lead generation source. And then I think like an area people don't really even consider is SEO backlinks for your site where you go on a podcast that host is typically going to have a show notes page, going to do a quick recap of your interview, they're gonna to link to your site on their website. And then essentially that gives you what's called a backlink, which is gonna raise the SEO quality of your site, which not to get too technical, but it's gonna make you look better on Google. It's gonna rank your, your website on Google a little bit higher. And being on the first page of Google, you know, in the, let's say the top three, top three searches, you know, that's, that's really gonna help your website. Cause I mean, honestly, no one really goes to the bottom of the page or, or goes to the second page of Google. You are absolutely right. Talk a little bit about the awesome team that you've built. 
So we built a fully remote team all within the US. I, so I had started it for the first year and I realized that I don't want to be pitching clients forever. It wasn't something that I'd love to do, but I knew there was something that it was a good value service that we could provide for clients. So I built out a team, started with one employee, trained her, realized that I could grow the company, you know, pretty much exponentially. Once I started to train her, realized that she was good at it, realized she was a little bit better than I had been at it. And she brought some great ideas. And I realized that to build up this team was really going to help the company. So from there, added an additional employee. And then kept, basically, it was just like the more clients I get, the more employees I would, I would hire. And, and it's nice being fully, having a fully remote team. They're able to work when they want. At least they're all based in the US. And the good thing is, is like, I don't have any, I don't have a ton of overhead. I don't have an office where, again, we're all fully remote. And it's nice, like this week or this month, we've had, we've had uh, a lot of new clients come on to work with us. So I was able to go out and hire an additional worker. So it's basically just the more work we get, the more employees I have. And it's a sort of, it's a nice business model because I know if they're on our team and I'm hiring them, then our company's making more money. So it's a, it's a win-win. Absolutely. How do you manage the remote team? How do you make sure that everyone's doing what they're supposed to do at the right time for the right client? Yep. So we use Toggle. So that's first and foremost. And Toggle, if you haven't heard of it, it's a time tracking device. So basically what I'll do is I'll have our team track the time that they're spending on a specific client. So that way, and I get, an, I get a weekly report, I believe it comes in every Sunday and I'll take a look at it and see what the team is doing for a specific client. And then on top of that, they also email me just a weekly report of what's going on with their clients so that I can see, all right, are, are there any issues with this certain client? This client's doing good. And that lets me know that they're doing their job. And then if I, let's say a week goes by or two weeks go by and I realize not a lot's going on, then I'll reach out to them. And I find that that really helps. It's just by sending me weekly updates because I don't want to be micromanaging them from, from afar. But at the same time, I, gotta, I have to make sure that they're doing their work because our clients rely on us to get them booked on shows. And if that's not happening, well, then a client's going to be reaching out to me and it's going to be a not so fun conversation. So just having them send me weekly updates. And then also I find that every week, we have a team meeting, so we're able to see each other face to face and it builds team bonding and, and that sort of thing. And, and I find that really helps as well. Absolutely. What is the favorite show you've ever booked anyone on? I would say the favorite show is probably the Mike Dillard show. And I say that, so when I was starting my podcast and I put together a list of 50 people that I wanted to get booked on my show. And I was, you know, had this is really, I was in college, had no idea what I was doing, but I reached out to all 50 people. And the only person that responded was Mike Dillard. So Mike Dillard came on my podcast when I was running it. And I've always just been a big fan of his. I don't think he has the biggest show, but I know it's a good quality show. And, and that was just more of a, a sentimental thing, being able to have one of our clients go on his show again. Because, again, he was, he was the only person out of 50 people that, uh, that I had reached out to. And I was reaching out to, you know, just like people I really looked up to, like um, Robert Kiyosaki and, and Elon Musk. And, and I had Mike Dillard on that list because I was listening to his podcast early on and I found it to be super valuable. So it was more just, I guess it was more sentimental than anything and, and being able to talk to him. And he was a super, super great guest. And I still love his podcast today. That is uh, fantastic. So what have been the biggest, what have been, we learn a lot more from people's failures than we do their successes. What have been some of the challenges you've had to overcome along the way and what'd you learn from them? I would say the biggest thing is coming to pricing. And the reason I say that is when we first started the business, we were on a commission pay, sort of like pay as you go. And what I mean by that is a client would come to us, you would get them booked on a podcast and then they would pay us. But as you, as I'm sure you know, so sometimes you book out a couple months in advance. So all of a sudden our client books out two or three months in advance. Well, I still have to pay my employee for the work that they put in today. And I'm not getting paid for my client until two or three months down the road. So that was obviously a, a very big cash flow issue. Like there used to be weeks where I'd be paying my employees more than what my clients were paying me. And, and it was just, it was just a big cash flow hassle. And what I ended up doing over the last year is I changed to a high ticket service offer where now instead of charging, say a hundred dollars per interview that we booked our clients on, now we're, we're charging three to 5,000, the quality of clients coming in are a lot better. I'm getting paid up front. So I don't have to worry about a client, you know, taking a long time to pay their invoice. Like on the commission model, I would have a client, I've been invoicing them since like December and they wouldn't pay till May. You know, that's a, that's, that's a big issue when I have yes. to pay, <laughs> when I have to pay a team. So that was probably the biggest lesson that I learned. And it, and, it, and it wasn't easy, you know, going off and 
charging people three to 5,000. Cause at that time, my mindset wasn't like I couldn't go out and afford my service that I was charging these people. But I realized that there, there are enough people out there willing to pay a high price. Yes. I get on conversations with people and they're like, that's just too expensive. But just as many people say that's too expensive, there's just as many people that don't even bat an eye on it. And they're like, Oh, you know, 3000, 5000 sounds great. Send over the contract. Let's get started. You know? And I find that there's just a happy medium and you really can't make everyone happy. Absolutely. What is the one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you started? Definitely wish I would have built a team earlier on. I, I That was after going through a year of doing it all on my own. And what I mean by going all on my own, I was writing pitches for clients. I was taking sales calls. I was researching shows for them to be on. I was invoicing, running social media, email campaigns, like just basically every single thing in the company. And I realized that once I hired a team and that they could take over and do the work that I didn't want to do, it just made me way more happier in my business where now I get to do the things I love, like doing podcast interviews like we're doing today and, and taking some of the sales calls. And I realized that I can build a team to take over everything I don't want to do. And that was the biggest learning curve for me because I used to think I can only be the one to do the best job with this company. And then I realized that there are people that are a lot, a lot better than me and they'd be more than willing to do it. So if I could go back and and restart, maybe not hire an employee on day one, but definitely hire them a little bit sooner than a year into the business. I know that you are a voracious consumer of content. What are three of your favorite podcasts to listen to and you can't describe your own? You know, so I would say the Mike Dillard show. I like his show. I think he brings on good quality guests. I enjoy the Bigger Pockets business podcast. I've been a fan of the real estate show for a while, but I find that they're they're their podcast, their business podcast per se is excellent as well. And they have a good, a couple other quality shows within their network. And then I also, I like the, the show Wealth Without Wall Street. I find that they do a great job explaining how you can make wealth, pretty much as, as the title says, without investing in stocks on Wall Street. And I find that going through school and going through college, that's basically the thing that everyone tells you to do is, in, is invest in the stock market. So I think it's fascinating how they bring on different guests, talk about different avenues where you can make money again outside of Wall Street. And I find that those combinations of shows give me a nice mix of business and, and sort of like personal finance money aspect. That makes a lot of sense. What has been the most interesting guest you've ever booked? I would say probably the most interesting guest is probably Jordan Harbinger. And he's probably the most, probably the most accomplished. And it was crazy. You know, he came in as a referral to our company. And I think, you know, given him and his stature and he has, you know, one of the top shows out there on iTunes and him coming to work with us, you know, really realize that we, we have a phenomenal product and, and service offering if he wants to find the value in it. Cause I'm assuming he probably gets interview requests all the time coming to him yet. He still wanted to work with us. So I think that's the, that's the coolest one. And outside like the big names like him, you know, we work with a lot of cool people. It's, it's just amazing to me how many people make six figures or more in their business that you would just, you would just never know. Like we've worked with people, they don't even have a website, anything like that up, but they they're, they've been a real estate investor. They've been, an entrepreneur and now all of a sudden they want to go out there and get a little bit more exposure and it's just it's just crazy to me these stories everyone these people have and, and how they've been so successful with with never even building an online presence you are you've built an amazing business what else do you want to share that i didn't think to ask you yeah i would say the, Probably the biggest thing when it comes to podcast guesting is if someone's never been out there, you know, typically you don't want to start off with the bigger shows. You typically want to start off on the smaller shows. And I find that's, that's an issue we run into sometimes with people, especially if you've never been on a podcast, it's going to take you a little while to get your story down, take you a little while to figure out what you're going to say. And there's this tool I recommend everyone use. It's called Listen Notes. It's basically like Google, but it's for podcasts where you can type in a podcast's keyword and it'll bring up podcasts with that relevant keyword. And then from there, there's some cool filter tools that you can use. My favorite one is you can filter by the amount of episodes a show has. So if you've never been on a podcast, I typically recommend trying to filter out by a show that has anywhere from, say, 10 to 25 episodes. So you're talking about a newer show. They're not as polished as the show itself. But again, it's going to give you good practice going on there and talking to the audience and that sort of thing. And I find that a lot of people, again, they want to go on the biggest shows right away, but you don't necessarily want to do that. And I typically just like to recommend what I call like the piggyback method. You start on a small show, get comfortable on those, then go on the medium shows, get comfortable on those, and then eventually try to shoot for the larger shows that are out there. And it's, and it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It could take six months. It could take a year. It could take two years. But again, any, like anything else, it's just sort of a work in progress. And I think that sometimes people miss the boat and they want to say, 
I can't tell you how many times I've had people come to me, like a client that's never been on a podcast, and they ask me, can you get me on the Joe Rogan show? <laughs> and, and that's where I have to go into this, this piggyback method that I tell them I, I wish I could get everyone on the Joe Rogan show. I, unfortunately, I haven't had a client on a show, but it, it's for some reason they always, they always mention Joe's show uh, when I'm talking to them. But that's, that's probably the number one piece of advice I would give to someone that's never been on a podcast and, and is sort of looking to it. Awesome. And yeah, obviously, talk a little bit about this. Do you provide strategy and coaching in terms of, okay, you're going to go get them on a, on a show. Do you work with them on what to do, how to be a great guest, how to monetize that appearance? Because you could put someone on the Joe Rogan show and it doesn't do them any good. It doesn't move the needle because they don't have a product or a service that's got that mass market appeal necessarily. Oh yeah, we definitely do. So the first and foremost, I look for in a client, I want to make sure that they have an opportunity to monetize their interviews. So I won't, I never want to take on anyone if they don't have like a lead magnet, if they don't have a product or service that could be offered online. So you, I, we always want to make sure someone has that. And then from there, we typically like to put up landing pages for them where you're not sending someone directly to your website homepage. Cause you could think when someone goes to the, your website homepage directly, they're, they're not going to really know what to do, where if you send them to like a landing page or a squeeze page, something along those lines where it's, you know, get a free ebook, get a free consultation call, whatever it may be, it's going to be way better than you just sending them to your website. So again, we always want to make sure they have a landing page set up and then on their calls, we always like to coach them and, and just tell them to tell stories. And we find that stories are the best. And with these stories typically start off on like a, I like to say like an A to B story where you go from, how did you get from point A to point B? How did you start from your business from basically nothing? And how did you get to where you are today? And then as the interview progresses, you basically go on that straight line. You know, you might diverge from it a little bit, but that typically, that typically works best. People love, people don't want to just hear your successes. As, as you mentioned earlier, Seth, people want to hear about your failures, what you went through to become successful. And, and people love those stories more often. So we, we always recommend that as well. Great advice. Fascinating business. Where can our listeners and viewers go who want to get booked on more podcasts, who want to learn more about you? Sure. So they can go to podcastingu.com slash sharkpreneur, and they can go check us out from there. And then at that point, they'll have an opportunity to schedule a free consultation call with myself um, when I can go over and, and see if the, we're a potential fit to work with them. Awesome. Well, we greatly appreciate the resource and the offer. This has been Seth Green for Sharkpreneur with Trevor Oldham of podcastingu.com forward slash shark. Trevor, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We'll see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level, but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.